Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Ken for Friday, April 23rd, 2021. Brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. Dr. Mike O'Neill, the best dentist I've ever gone to, the only dentist I've gone to the last 27 years. Great at what he does. Caring, efficient, pain-free. It's everything you want in a dental practice. Give him a call. 317-849-2933. Finally, once and for all, take control of your dental health. Hit like, hit subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Let's talk about sports. A little bit of Q&A about the Colts and their draft. We got six days until the draft. Here's some questions that have been asked of me over the last, oh, I don't know. We, we talk about the draft from the end of the regular season, right, or the end of the postseason when the Colts are lucky enough to be in it. We start talking about the draft. The draft is on the doorstep. Here are some questions about the draft. Are the Colts going to stick at 21? The quick answer is no, they're not. Chris Ballard is going to trade down. It's what Chris Ballard does. He treasures picks. He says again and again, I like them picks. How do you get picks? You trade for picks. You trade down. You trade back. The more picks you get, the greater the likelihood that you're going to hit on picks. If you stick, if the Colts stick with six, they're going to be lucky to have three guys, really lucky to have three guys who play a meaningful role on this team this coming season or any coming season. If you've got eight picks, you're going to be lucky to have four. Ten picks, five. It works that way. The more you got, the better your chance to win. It's just like playing roulette at the casino. So the Colts, at 21, they are likely to be able to get the same guy at 26 than 21, so why not make that trade? Uh, with whom are they likely to deal down? There are a couple of really good... Uh, matches for the kind of range of picks that I think the Colts would like. Uh, the Dolphins have got 36 and 50. If the Colts can get 36 and 50 for 21, that's not a bad haul. Uh, I also like the Browns with the 26th, 89th, and 110th pick. If the Colts can get that return for 21, that is well worth the investment of 21. Um, uh, who are a couple of down-the-board guys that Ballard might pick? Peyton Turner, we talked about him yesterday. He's an edge rusher out of Houston. He has huge hands. He is long. He is violent. He plays to the whistle. He's got a chip on his shoulder. He was under-recruited because he was injured as a senior in high school. Offered by Houston and Houston only. Came into Houston, worked his ass off, became a really, really good edge guy, and somebody who projects as a high-end NFL player. Now, does he have the high end of a Jason Away or a, a Jalen Phillips? No, he doesn't have that kind of high end. He's not that kind of dynamic athlete. But he is going to be a really good edge guy for an NFL team at some level. Does not project to be a first-rounder, though, which kind of makes him a, a, a terrific target for the Colts because if the Colts trade back and out of the first round, there you go. Thursday night's going to be interesting. We we went through this two years ago, right? Where where the Colts had a pick in the first round, all of a sudden, like, ah, the Colts have traded. And so Thursday night becomes blah, 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 and nothing, you know? And they don't tell you right off, right? You don't find out at three in the afternoon that the Colts are trading out of the first round. You find out when they're on the clock, because why would anybody trade before then? Makes Thursday kind of a... Uh, I'm not going to say a wasted effort, but kind of, you know, one of those one of those nights because what the Colts could do and the reason to watch, I believe 99% they're going to trade out at 21. They could trade down to 26, they could trade down to 29, and then that maintains that first rounder and I like getting a first rounder back. Because if you get a first rounder back, then that first round contract, you've got an option for the fifth year. So you've got 5 years of controlling a guy before he becomes an unrestricted free agent. Um, another guy, we talked about this guy yesterday, uh, Simi Fajoko, a wide receiver out of Stanford. He's a little bit longer in the tooth, going to be 23. He is fast. He is long. He is rangy. 6'3", 222, ran a 4'4", 240 at his pro day. And you, you watch a tape, he's got great, he can make a one-handed catch, one play, and then the next, 
he takes a pass off the chest plate and it falls to the ground. He makes easy drops and tough catches. Hopefully, at some point, you uh, you find a way to kind of coach him away from those easy drops uh, because those are drive stallers and the Colts aren't going to be dynamic enough offensively to withstand a bunch of drive stalling drops. So there you go. Uh, another question about the Colts. After winning 11 games last year, why are people guessing the Colts will win fewer games despite having one more game? They got 17 games. So if you take Phillip Rivers out of the equation, you replace him with Carson Wentz, you bring virtually everybody else back, minus Justin Houston and Danico Autry and Anthony Costanzo. Why do you think that they're going to win fewer than 11 games this year when they won 11 games last year? The reason is Carson Wentz's health. If Carson Wentz stays healthy for 16 games, this is going to be a better team with a better offense. If Carson Wentz gets hurt, right now you've got Jacob Eason as a backup quarterback, and that just will not do. We don't know. You know what? It might do. We don't know. He's a complete unknown. We have seen him in the preseason, not in games, but in practice. He does not miss. He is incredibly accurate. I watched him like a hawk. All preseason, I saw him miss one throw because of accuracy issues. That's it. He looks like a quarterback, but we haven't seen him. We don't know what this guy's going to bring to the party. Jacob Eason, we have no idea. So that's why maybe people, I'm not picking them to win fewer games. I think they wind up 11-6 and six at worst. Their schedule also is much tougher this year than it was last year, but they still play in the AFC South. They got two games against the Jags, two games against the Texans. That's four wins right there. Let's go. I'm counting chickens before they hatch. I'm doing exactly what the Colts hate the media doing. Oh, sure, they're going to win this game and that game, and then they're going to win this game and that game. And those guys, their hair falls out. It pops right out of their head. Um, there are a couple of college basketball rumors that are of interest, maybe one certainly to Indiana fans, and, and that is that Keon Brooks, and this is from Randy Newman of Big Blue Express, He's speculating that Keon Brooks is going to enter the, uh, the uh, transfer portal and leave Kentucky basketball. Indiana fans have kind of been waiting for this because Keon Brooks is from Fort Wayne. Keon Brooks has kind of, uh, we, we've gotten a vibe from Keon Brooks that he wouldn't mind playing at Indiana. But the problem there is that, number one, Keon Brooks is a 21% three-point shooter. That's a problem. Number two is that there are no, there's no room at the end. 13 scholarships, and 13 guys on scholarship. So there's no room, at least not right now. And we don't like creaning guys, so let's not, let's not go down that road as much as I want to win. Let's stick with the guys who are Indiana Hoosiers and not covet what is now a Kentucky Wildcat. Another interesting rumor, uh, Iowa guard C.J. Frederick, he's in the transfer portal has played at Iowa the last two seasons. He's a 46.6% three-point shooter. Indiana fans have seen C.J. Frederick play. He knocks down buckets. He is a three-point bucket getter. He's from Covington High School in Kentucky. He may transfer to Kentucky as a three-point kind of specialist. His dad, by the way, is the uh, market manager at the Cumulus Cluster of radio stations here in Indianapolis that include... WFMS, WZPL, uh, CBS Sports 1430, all those stations. So there you go, a little local connection to C.J. Frederick, who may decide to play at Kentucky. Really, really bad news, uh, Kentucky basketball. And it, normally we joke about Kentucky and bad news, and we celebrate it, but not this. Terrence Clark, a guard for Kentucky last year, died in a car wreck yesterday. He declared for the, uh, for the draft was not projected to be taken in the draft, but he died yesterday in a car crash in the San Fernando Valley, ran a red light at a high rate of speed, uh, got hit by a truck, hit a utility pole, and was transported to the hospital and pronounced dead. And that is really, really sad. Kid was just 19. You know what? Um, You got to take care, right? Some mistakes. Some mistakes... You, you're just fine. You don't even realize there were mistakes. And some mistakes that seem pretty innocuous at the time wind up costing you big. And this, this uh, huge uh, tariff for Terrence Clark. 
and his family and the Kentucky basketball family and our hearts go out to all of them. Uh, a lot of news from Purdue yesterday. They got a commitment yesterday. They signed Brian Waddell from Carmel High School. Brian Waddell can flat shoot threes, um, hit 6'7", 40% three-point shooter, and, uh, so, and a two-time state champion. And the son of Matt Waddell, who is a teammate of Matt Painter's at Purdue. He is going to play at Purdue. Good for him. Kind of one of those Purdue guys, you know. Um, it, Purdue just finds guys who fit their system and who find a way to be productive players. And I, I think that Brian Waddell is going to be one of those players for Purdue. Also, Terry Johnson, former Butler assistant coach, former Ohio State assistant coach, is moving from Ohio State to Purdue. Terrific defensive guy, d- defensive coach, uh, a really g- good dude. Interviewed him a bunch of times when he was at Butler and, and enjoy him a lot. Good for him uh, signing on at Purdue with, I would assume, a substantial raise. At least I hope so. If I was his agent, he gets a substantial raise. Uh, let's celebrate some birthdays, shall we, on this kind of chilly Friday. The weather, what are we doing? Wilkes, let's go at Fox 59. You know what? When the weather's good, we credit God. When the weather's bad, we blame Brian Wilkes. That's just the way it is. I will not blame Chuck Lofton for bad weather. I just won't do it. He's too nice a person. Uh, Brian Wilkes can stand. Yeah, he, he can take that weight. You know what I mean? The blame. He can. Chuck, I, I, I like Chuck too much. Uh, Rick Raffanello celebrating a birthday today. The great Slappy. Rick Raffanello, the guy who coined Slappy as Rick Raffanello's uh, nickname, passed away earlier this year. The great Granville Waiters, um, Ohio State University former center, former Chicago Bull. Uh, Jeff Klink, happy birthday. The great Brian A. Smith, happy birthday. Michael Grady, happy birthday. Happy birthday to the great Michael. Julie loves Michael Grady. David Bird, entrepreneur to the stars. Happy birthday, Michael Blakely. Happy birthday, Ben Heisler. Mike Soroki, John Sloan, Patricia Walsh, Walsh, John Davis, Scott Hall, and Kevin Torzuski. Happy birthday. If today's your birthday, you celebrate like hell. If it's not your birthday, you celebrate somebody else. That is best done with an honest and specific compliment. Take great care of yourself. Take great care of each other. Understand that life is precious. Happiness is precious. Let's bring some, let's bring some light into the lives of others, shall we? Absolutely, we should do that today. We'll talk to you a little bit later today. Uh, might do a... No, you know what? This afternoon, we're going to hear from Chris Ballard and his pre-draft media availability. Can't wait to hear from Chris Ballard because he will tell us things. He will be honest, and if you read between the lines, we'll get a really good picture of what he plans to do uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday next week in the draft. Can't wait for that. 